Welcome to Scorched Earth. A general mid-month reading for the side of Pisces, Sun, Moon and Ascendant for the last two weeks of October. I hope you will. So obviously this is shorter than the main monthly read because it's just covering that two week period from the 15th to the 31st of October. <clears throat> and I'm going to try not to pull any clarifiers, although I'm totally open to breaking my own rule if I need to. Um, I am switching it up this week, this week, this month. I'm going to do things a little bit differently. Usually I pull three cards for uh, your current energy, three cards for what's coming towards you and three cards of advice. Now. I've been doing a little bit of contemplating and I want to try something a little bit different. I'm going to keep the current energy and I'm going to keep the advice. But the middle row, I want to do something different because I, as some of you know, like I'm not really that much interested in external factors, things that are coming towards you, you know, um, people, relationships, things like that. What I'm more concerned about is what's going on with you. What lessons are you supposed to be learning at, at moment and so the middle row I intend to pull cards on what it is that you are supposed to be looking for right it's this point of introspection what are you supposed to be concentrating on at the moment what is your current energy trying to show you about what it is that you need to learn moving forwards right so we're going to give it a go I've done I've done three signs already and there's some really interesting things that have come out so bear with me Right, so let's get three cards for your current energy, please. The Pisces. Two cards tumble up together there. We've got the Page of Pentacles and the Seven of Swords. And the Three of Cups. The last card for fucking hell, the Pisces, please. King of Cups, right. This is interesting. I've got the Ace of Swords at the bottom of the deck, right? Truth. Wheel of Fortune. Ho! Oh. Uh, five of Pentacles and the Queen of Swords. Right. What I picked up in the meditation was a stabilisation of your energy, and I'm glad to feel that because the last couple of readings that I've done for you, I've been quite concerned about what Pisces has been experiencing. Like it's been heavy. Now, Mercury is in retrograde at the moment in your sister uh, water sign of uh, Scorpio. And so with Scorpio energy, we're going deep. You know, we're going, we're kind of, we're kind of going down in the dark to see what's scuttling around down there. And I mentioned this because notions of the shadow have come up for every single reading that I've done so far. And I am working on the shadow readings at the moment as well. So using the energy in the way that it's supposed to. I feel like we're going to get shades of this coming in here for you. But what I picked up on was this stabilisation, and this is really good, and it's borne out potentially by the cards that we've got here for your current energy. We've got the Seven of Swords and the Page of Pentacles. We've got the Three of Cups, and we've got the King of Cups, and I like that. Scorpio energy as well. But if we just go to the Shadow cards first, we've got this Ace of Swords, which is this kind of new realisation, right? Sometimes it can be a flash of insight, but certainly it's the lens through which you see the world it has, it has gained another, you know, element to it somewhere, right? You're seeing things clearly now in a way that perhaps for the last couple of readings that I've done at least, you've been having difficulty doing. The Wheel of Fortune directly underneath that is interesting because for me that is a card of a teaching moment, right? This, this is something that is being taught to you here. Are you listening? Right? Are you paying attention to this? But it is also talking about forces that are moving outside of your control, right? Being subject to the whim of fate somewhat. It feels like you've realized that there is a lesson in here for you, right? And more than that, you also realize how much you've abandoned your own needs, right? while you've been stuck in this energy. The Queen of Swords is, is quite useful at this point because she's wielding this for you. you know? She's showing you the ways in which in which you were sinking rather than swimming, you know, to, to quote the reading that I did for you last time, <clears throat> right? You see it now. And there's a process of... of rationalization that's going on here and for you like more so than any other sign I would say that that's perhaps because you've detached from it a little bit right you you're not really subject 
to the 3D world in exactly the same way that everybody else is, right? You, you come down here by consent while you are in here in this 3D body, right? Everybody does that, but everybody else kind of manages to be a 3D being in a way that seems to be difficult for Pisces, right? So you have to consent not only to come down here in the first first place, but also then further to be here, be entirely here all the time. And you'd actually nailed that a couple of months ago. And then whatever this situation was for you kind of reared its head. And I thought you just kind of like reeling back from it. <clears throat> this feels incredibly stable now. I mean, it's incredibly stable compared to where you were. It feels very stable. So <clears throat> the first two cards that came out were the Seven of Swords and the Page of Pentacles. Now, I like this page being here for you because he is Earth energy. So he is grounded and he does speak about a new start, right? Going off on a, on a new path. And, and sometimes it can speak to, you know, learning. It's, it's the card of the student in some ways, right? But it's definitely like, deciding that you're going to take a path this way in the 3D. The fact that it's here with the Seven of Swords could indicate that you're prepared to take the risk, but it feels more to me like it's a reconciliation of um, an understanding that you have been done wrong in some way, right? The Seven of Swords can often talk about deceit and it can talk about underhand behaviour. Um, But it's interesting that we've got this Ace of Swords here at the bottom of the deck, the Shadow card. And then we've got this character in this Seven of Swords holding one sword, which would be the Ace. And then we've got these Six Swords that are all in the stone at the moment. It's like, you know you need to move away from this situation. You're not quite ready to do it yet, but you are... You're taking steps toward the act of moving away from whatever deceit, whatever deception, whatever bad juju has kind of afflicted you at the moment. And that, uh, for one of you, that is absolutely what's occurred here. I feel that quite strongly. <clears throat> I don't think you're happy about it. I'm not going to even say that for a second. You're not happy about it. But there's a reconciliation going on inside of you, right? It, it feels like a, a level of detachment where you go, right, okay, I see what this is. I see what this has been trying to teach me. And I understand that I need to move. Even if I'm not quite moving yet, I am putting things in place so that I can move. The Three of Cups and the King of Cups around it, I really, really like. Now, it could be that you've got a Scorpio around you that's assisting. I actually don't really feel that particularly strongly. But you do have an emotional support network around you should you choose to avail yourself of it. And I don't know how many of you have because I've got a real sense of isolation and loneliness from the last two readings that I did. So I don't know if perhaps you had even tried reaching out to people. You know? But I see that they are here for you. And I think that maybe you have now reached out to these people and they perhaps have assisted with this stabilization and this grounding that seems to be coming through in the reading here the king of cups is interesting because i've never really noticed that before it's sort of a it's sort of a progression from the page of cups energy which is a card that i absolutely associate with you the page is for me is just the quintessentially Piscean card, even though it's not got that strict um, correspondence. But in the Page of Cups, you know, you've got a, you know, a young person kind of standing in a fairly whimsical way, usually wearing some kind of daft clothing, right? But he's got a cup and there's usually a fish, right? Kind of being all like, hey, here I am, you know, and it, it's quite a, it's quite a sweet scene. <clears throat> Here we've got a king also holding a big cup, but out of the cup is coming a seahorse. I don't know if the camera can pick that up. And the king is looking directly at the seahorse. It looks like they're engaged in conversation. <clears throat> so this feels like you rising in some way, Pisces, right? Uh, elevating yourself in a grounded way, 
with the assistance of other people and looking at this seahorse and receiving a message from it. You know, the, the page isn't usually, the page is usually looking at you and there's usually this fish kind of pointing out and it's like, the fish could be talking, but the page is looking at you. So you're not getting a sense that the page is really paying attention to what is coming out of this cup. But this seems like a focus. You are listening to the message and maybe the message that is coming forth from, you know, the mouth of the seahorse here is the lesson that was contained within what awful situation you have found yourself in recently. Intriguing. Well, let's dig a little bit deeper because I want to have a look now and see exactly what it is, you know, what this current energy was trying to prompt you to look at. So, you know, two cards for Pisces. Seven of Wands. Oh, so many together. Got four cards here, so I'm not going to take them all because that's far too many. But, oh, Pisces. We have got strength and death together. Leo and Scorpio energy. Powerful as fuck that. Wow. And there's that fucking Leo again. Right, that Leo that is always present in your readings. You know, whether that's in your chart or whether that's, you know, somebody around you. I don't know. But I haven't done a single Pisces reading this year, I don't think, where Leo hasn't appeared somewhere. Then we've got the Ace of Wands and the Nine of Cups. Now, this is really interesting. Do you know what? Fuck it. I am going to take these because, <clears throat> because as I'm talking, it feels like it's relevant. We've got the Fool at the bottom of the deck here, followed by the Nine of Wands. Now the Nine of Wands is a Sagittarian card, but it talks about boundaries, right? And we've got we've got a lot of big, powerful animals depicted here, down in this middle row for you now. Now the Fool is about release, right? It's about liberation. It's about taking a path that you have not gone down before. And for you, you know, a lot of this year was really painful for you. And then you turned a corner and you started kind of being here, right? Consenting to being in the 3D world and, and starting to learn to use it instead of kind of fighting against it almost. I've spoken before about how I felt that. that and it's something that, that I understand. This is the bit of Pisces energy that I understand. There's something like almost homesick right? about where you should be because there's a this 3d world doesn't really suit very well it feels restrictive it feels it feels a lot of things right so there's a homesickness for something that is much lighter something that is much less restricted by by 3d considerations in you and you, you were really making strides in that. And then all of a sudden you got sideswiped by something that came in. And it'd be different for all of you. I don't know what it is. I've certainly got enough feedback on the Pisces videos I've done in the last two months to know that this was absolutely something that was happening, happening to a particular pocket of collective Pisces. I am. And it spun you off in a way that you weren't anticipating obviously, because it broadsided you. Perhaps what this lesson was, was giving you a very short, sharp, shock kind of lesson in dealing with that and coming back from it, right? You, you worked so hard this year, right? You put up boundaries, you started bringing your energy back to yourselves, you started started really paying attention to where you mesh too much with with everything around you and then something comes in that gives you cause to test that that you have instilled moving forwards right because what i see here is a shitload of power pisces now i don't think as yet that you are in the mindset of um being grateful for whatever this experience is that has come towards you. I, I don't feel that in the slightest. Like I said, I don't feel like you're particularly happy about the realizations that you've had, albeit that they have been quite stabilizing for you. But you're not resisting it anymore, like you were you know, for the last month, six weeks. 
that resistance is leaving. And so where you are now is different to where you were four, five, six months ago, when you were still struggling, but you had not yet achieved that point of consent and working with the energies that you had. Does that make sense, right? You achieved it and then it disappeared again, but you know you can do it now. Right? You know that it's, it's possible for you. And what I see is you coming back stronger than ever before. Pisces, this is powerful as fuck. So we've got the Seven of Wands here. Traditionally a card of, of being guarded or defensive. But they kind of have pejorative overtones where I feel for you it's it's more protective. Right? And there is a nuanced difference between the two. Protecting yourself from from those who would seek to take advantage of you, actually, Pisces, I think. You know, the, the, the situation that you've been dealing with may not in any way relate to, you know, some shoddy behaviour from somebody else, right? It might just be one of those, one of those things that happens, you know, just shitty life stuff. But somewhere in there, there's a lesson for you about how you deal with the world around you, right? and how you protect yourself from from aspects of it that might seek to do you harm. Now then we've got these two cards that have come out together, strength and death. Now interestingly enough, did we not talk about Phoenix energy at length in the last video? I feel sure that we did. And the interesting thing was I went to bed that night and I had some pretty epic Phoenix type energy dreams didn't have a phoenix in it but this notion of birth and death and birth and death all being part of a continuous cycle was coming through really really strongly in the dream and it was i was thinking about you right i was thinking really strongly about you and actually i even mentioned it on the live stream because i forgot the dream right up until i did the live stream that was like three or four days later or something like that and as i was talking on the live stream it just popped into my head again and I was like, holy shit, it's a thing. You are undergoing, you know, a fairly painful cycle of death and rebirth. But I think, I'm sure it was with you that I was discussing, you know, we, we, we see the phoenix, you know, we know the law of the phoenix and, and how it works. We see it on Harry Potter, you know, in Dumbledore's phoenix there. We understand that the bird incinerates itself and then it is reborn but what nobody addresses is is that process easy for the bird is that a process something that causes that bird a great deal of pain and distress just because it gets to be reborn at the the other side it doesn't mean that it isn't necessarily a process that is fraught with things that truly agitate the soul you know the strength and death coming up together here, you are growing in ways that you couldn't have anticipated through this process. And I think that this process has been excoriating for you. I do. And I'm sorry that you've gone through that. But does resisting that process ultimately cause more pain? I think perhaps it does. You always manage to have the most incredibly profound readings, Pisces. But I see you rising. I see you rising from the ashes of all of this. And you, because the very next card was the Ace of Wands, right? There's that moment of rebirth for the, for the bird i think yeah the ace of wands is is the spark of creative potential you know? it, it contains the full potentiality of everything in the one suit and it's very much about being in the present it's about being in the here and now and maybe all of these things that you were struggling with this year are things of the past that had all kind of come to a head okay you, know? you kind of tried to work through those a little bit but then the present came and it 
it sideswiped you. So now you deal with the things in the present. And it feels like it's been a process of, of refinement for you, right? To find yourself, yes, <clears throat> in the here and now, but also a process of refining exactly what it is you want from your life moving forwards. Okay? We discussed at length over the course of this year how difficult you find it being here, you know. But you are here and you've chosen to be here at this time and you've chosen, frankly, to experience what it is that you've you've been experiencing. So what is the lesson? What are you taking from this? And for for some of you, I think that it is it is the submission to your own personal pain not other people's which is what you've done throughout your life you know and people have projected and you mesh with people's energy and you feel their hurts as if they were your own but they're not your own and in some ways it stops you from feeling your own personal pain while well, your own personal pain is here and it, it, it's it's coshing you over the head Submitting to your own pain and your own work seems to be what what your teaching moment is here. Holy shit, Pisces, fucking hell. Let's get you some advice. <clears throat> we have the sun, the other card of Leo. Every single fucking We have the Hermit, we have two together. We have the Knight of Wands and the Five of Pentacles. And these are cards of advice, remember. The Sun is the most positive card in the deck, right? It is the, it is the sun after a storm, you know, <clears throat> when the winds recede and, and the sun comes out and everything just starts to dry off and, and, and the storm is just a memory then. You know, maybe the consequences of the storm still remain. But you're free to be able to clear those up now without, you know, personal endangerment. The way that I see the sun is kind of dual-fold. And it's interesting because they're kind of slightly contrary to each other in a weird sort of way, but I kind of feel like you'll get it. So on the one hand, I feel like it's the counterpart of the moon. The moon being the things that are hidden within us, right? The non-conscious, the subconscious, however you, you want to see it. So the moon is the process of, of extricating those things that we are not aware of, kind of bringing them out. The sun is the consciousness, the things that we are aware of, you know? You say you pull things out into the sun and it's the, it's the best disinfectant, right? Look at the thing bring what is hidden out into the light so that you can see it and so that more importantly you can release it but the other thing that the sun card speaks to me of is is the inner child and this is why in some ways it runs slightly contrary to the previous interpretation because the inner child often is not heard it forms part of of the shadow there or at least it tends to be buried underneath the shadow got to kind of pull it out. So ultimately, it kind of ends up being the same, right? Introducing your inner child to your consciousness, reparenting that inner child, dealing with the things that are, that that inner child is kind of frightened of. You taking charge of that and reparenting that, bringing it into your consciousness. The end result is the same. You're being called to do some really heavy work here, Pisces, but it's for good reason. <clears throat> and we have the Hermit. There are no answers outside of yourself. They are all within you. And I suspect for at least some of you, the inner child holds a lot of, of the answers. Yeah? The rest of the answers will be in the shadowy stuff that is kind of keeping your inner child from surfacing. Five of Pentacles and the Knight of Wands is interesting because the Five of Pentacles has already come up for you. Has it come up for you? Or is that someone else? I can't remember. Right. 
But for me, it talks about not having your needs met in some way, right? And I feel for you, Pisces, that you personally have not been meeting your own needs, right? I think quite likely because you haven't really understood that you had needs, or if you understood that you had needs, you felt guilty about having them in the first place. You certainly felt guilty about kind of asserting that at anyone. And it's time for that to stop, right? Because you're a full sovereign, extremely powerful being here and now. You teach the world how to t treat you by how you treat yourself. And what we've been saying for months and months and months, boundaries, keep yourself safe, look after your own needs first, then whatever you have left, you can share with other people. But ultimately, your journey is about you. And I feel like this is all kind of, this, this retrograde energy is kind of pulling in now to make you look at you and how you respond to things. The Knight of Wands energy is, is interesting because it's about being right here, right now. Not in the past, not in the future, not up there either, but here. Mm -hmm. Taking care of your own needs as and when they leap up, you know, and make themselves known to you. Yeah? Wow, Pisces, holy fuck. So, <clears throat> I'm going to leave it there. I hope that you found something in here that speaks to you. I'd love it if you consider subscribing or, you know, liking the video or something like that. It does feel like the end is in sight, though. That's the important thing. You are on the right path. I feel that really quite strongly. And, and now is the time. I mean, now is the time to use that retrograde energy to go within and look at what is you that you have not been looking at for a very long time, right? But also to submit to this process. And I know it hurts. Uh, it, it's interesting. I always feel like you and you and Scorpio are kind of like, you know, the, the height of the light that Pisces reaches is indicative of the, the, the depth of the pain that Scorpio experiences. Yeah. And I think that, that 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 actually Pisces and Scorpio are two like incredibly misunderstood start signs, but that you're actually very similar in some ways. Just from opposite ends of the spectrum, you know? <clears throat> so now maybe it's time to take take some lessons from Scorpio and dig around inside you. You know, I'm going to leave it there because I'm going to talk about this forever. I know that I love you all and I'll see you soon.